and today I will do my best to um, to explain my work as clear as possible in a very limited uh, amount of time using my still broken English and and also I hope some of you might find it useful or find, find some uh, useful information that can take away and let be used in your own research so the topic is reliability analysis using Bayesian hierarchical modeling method and my supervisor is Max Muller sorry I didn't put that on the slides <laughs> and okay so the first thing first uh, the reliability this is the uh, example that can that I think it's quite interesting that can help us to see what reliability is through an example so a hammer might be 100% reliable if used for driving tax but would, be, would have a zero reliability if used to stop a train if used to break rocks it's reliable for a given period might have some value, value between zero and 100% so that's the definition of the reliability so you can see that <coughs> the probability that an item will perform a required function which are different if, if the required function are different you will have different reliability and another um, important thing is that you have for a st stated period of time to define the reliability but that's just an uh, easy way or an interesting way that can help us to understand and remember what reliability is but that's not my research and so my research is uh, in reliability there are different ways different perspectives to look at this problem some people use um, material way um, doing fatigue analysis or even in logistics that try to decrease the operation and maintenance cost but my research is about statistic analysis the goal is to predict the time to failure distribution of the target which is the small wind turbine in my case so the bigger picture behind this is to provide suggestion for in the decision making process that can help the um, the people in the company to uh, when they make some decisions, they have something to depend on. So, as I say, that's a goal. But what I'm trying to do is that I want to use all the information that I can get through the process. This includes the expert knowledge, uh, which is the belief, which is uh, what's, what's your belief of the reliability of a certain component. And another thing is the warranty record, which is a direct time to failure information that collect through the implementation of the turbine and also the scholar data which is collected throughout the process and the scholar data used here are turbulent intensity and average wind speed because that's the data that the company collects and then the, the last one is the geographical data which is the location of the turbine and for this one it needs to be more explanation is that once you know the location of the turbine I try to understand the terrain slope of different uh, from different uh, direction and the goal is to understand the inflow angle affecting on the turbine uh, affecting on the time to failure distribution so that's my that's the thing that I want to do and the thing that helps me to do this is Bayesian hierarchical modeling so Bayesian hierarchical modeling is one of the graphical reliability structures you might see the previous two before uh, the reliability block diagram and the full tree and it's just another graphical uh, reliability structure and these three th uh, structures, they are interchangeable. If you have one of the uh, uh, two pr uh, on, the, on the first two uh, columns, you can change that to reliability block diagram. But I didn't use this approach. I created the, the Bayesian hierarchical modeling from scratch. But this, I just provide you some uh, uh, for three different simple uh, structure where you can, maybe you can use. So why? why I use Bayesian hierarchical modeling uh, as I said I want to I want to use all the information that I collect now not, not I collect that the company collect I want to get use of that and then the first thing is that you can handle soft and high information in the unifying framework when I say soft that means the beliefs in the process like like so it's not related to any data and it shouldn't come from the data and the hard information is the data that you collect through the process, like the uh, warranty, uh, the time to failure information, the warranty record, the scholar data, the uh, the geographical data, and this could be discrete or continuous. Uh, discrete means it could be one or zero. It's an indicator, so it indicates like whether the status of the data. Or continuous means like um, it could be a value, like voltage, like current, like temperature, anything. And the second is that people use this um, method to. Uh, to create large complex model like thousands nodes using this method 
And the third, I think, is the most important thing, and that's why I think the third one is the, the, the main reason I use this one, because you can create a very complex model, but you need to solve it. So there's a way. A brilliant statisticians already developed a way to solve it, and the software that, it, that helps you to create a model and then solve it is called Wimbar. And the method is called uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo. It's basically a, a, it's a Monte Carlo process, so it's a sampling process, but with a Markov chain mechanism behind. So, and I implement the model using two main open source software. One is R, one is Wimba. So, Bayesian hierarchical modeling, the, the foundation is the base rule. So what is base rule tells us? So base rule te basically tells us about uh, the posterior joint distribution proportional to the likelihood function and the prior distribution. But how can this be linked to our problem? So, all the data that you have, uh, you have collected, that will help you to create the likelihood function. And your expert knowledge, your belief, is a prior. So you can see this as an updating process, that you have this prior, and then you collect data, and then use this data to update your prior, uh, your, your prior belief. And then the goal is the, the result is the posterior distribution, which is the updated prior belief. And this is the proposed model. I forgot to say one thing, because the data is confidential, so I won't be able to show you any results. But I, will, I can show you the, the model that we developed and the way that we show the model to the company. So the goal here is to extract or predict time to failure distribution. And on the way there, we can also quantify the repair effectiveness of each component. Also, the, to quantify the effect of the environmental factors. What, what do I mean by that? I will explain a bit li later. And the entire proposed model looks like this. It's like a uh, nate, nate <laughs> structure. So the core is the fundamental model, and on top of that, we add random effect. And on top of that, we add repair model. And on top of that, we add environmental model. But with the complexity increased, you need more data to, to, make the, to update your, your, your prior belief, basically. So. <coughs> So this is the model that I, uh, we proposed. Um, no, normally, I, I need 10 to 13 uh, slides to explain this model, but I will try to explain in one slide. And in a, I, 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 tried, I, I will try my best. And different color represents different features of the model. And from this model, it's a, it's a, um, it's a graphical reliability structure, but uh, you can only see the dependent relationship of each node. But you won't be, a, you, you don't know what's the relationship between this. You only know that, okay, so this node and this node depend on, uh, is the parent node of this one, but you don't know what kind of function that they are dependent on. But so it's clear that when you try to trace back to, <coughs> trace back to which nodes that are affecting on the certain uh, stochastic node. So the first one, the, the fundamental one, is the assumption that the time to failure distribution, uh, the time to failure is sample from a viable distribution. But why viable? Because viable is quite flexible, and then the lambda is the scale parameter of the viable, and then the beta is the shared parameter of the viable. They all have certain reliability meaning. So lambda can can be linked to the scale of the of the of the time to failure. It could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years, and then the beta can correspond to the uh, failure characteristic that could be increasing failure rate, decreasing failure rate, or constant failure rate. So it's widely used in reliability analysis. And the node with the uh, underlying E, that's the node that we have data. So on top of the fundamental model, I add random effect. The goal of the random effect is to investigate the reliability behavior to individual turbine level. And then the best way to explain this is that you give each turbine a flag. And then through the updating process, the flag will get bigger or smaller. But the flag is a, is a magic flag. So <laughs> say, say if, someone, if, a, if a turbine is called Tom and another, another turbine is called John, so if you, your name is Tom or John. <laughs> and, uh, through the updating process, maybe John thinks, okay, I, I, I need more attention, so my flag needs to get bigger. But at the same time, because the flag is a magic flag, so he can communicate with the Tom. And then 
he knows that okay, Tom is in the in the even worse uh, case. So he thinks that, okay, maybe my flag should be that big. Maybe Tom deserves a bigger flag. That's how render effect do. That's the best <laughs> example that I can think of to explain this. So that's how we can uh, investigate the the reliability to individual turbine level. So on top of that, we add the explanatory variable, which is the environmental factors. And as you can see, that all these uh, nodes, they are all depend on only the scale parameter, which means I only assume that will affect the scale of the time to failure. So it won't affect the characteristic of the failure. And here I just use a very simple uh, uh, log lin uh, linear relationship to add all this to the scale. And as you can see that uh, we have uh, turbulent intensity, which is TI, average wind speed, current slope, but they are real data. So B, C, D is used to quantify the effect of this real data. So after the updating process, that B, C, D will tell us how uh, these three environmental factors are affecting the, time to, uh, affecting the scale parameter and also affecting the time to failure distribution. So the last bit is the um, we try to know the effect of the repair effective effectiveness. And the way that uh, we do that is that we consider the effective age. There's an example. So we, we, we change the, the traditional two parameter variable distribution to a three parameter variable distribution. But the, th the third parameter is the condition on certain age. So the example is given a person is 99 years old. The probability that he will or she will die have a certain probability. And given a person is one year old, one years old, the probability of, uh, the probability of, of he or she will die has a certain has a certain pro uh, uh, distribution. So that is how it works. And then the repair will affect that effective age. So if we say uh, the example would be uh, if the medical is really advanced, then the medic, after every treatment, that can bring us back to 18 years old. <laughs> that's good. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how it works. So basically, that's the uh, guidance of the, the model. And then we use the time to failure uh, data to update the entire model. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's the model itself. <coughs> Sorry. And, but the result of the model will be a lot of posterior joint distribution and the company doesn't like that. So I created a website to, um, to show the result basically, to, um, to show the result in a more interactive way and a more understandable way. And this is also in, uh, developed in an open source sub, uh, environment. It's, uh, it's called Shiny. If, if you are doing a data analysis and you want, you want to show, uh, you want to create an interactive a website that uh, you can use that is free. And then the concept behind this is that I put all the algorithm on the server. And then I leave the confidential part, the sensitive part, uh, at the customer side. And then, but there's some limitation of this one because each model that I just share takes maybe one to two days to run because the, uh, because the markup uh, Monte Carlo takes a lot of iterations. So for the proposed Bayesian hierarchy, hierarchical model part, the website can do post analysis and also the visualization of some raw, uh, raw data. And then the life, uh, the life part is to do some conventional reliability analysis. And this, reliability, uh, this conventional reliability analysis are uh, HPP, uh, Couple of Meyer, Crown Mesa, Wellboo, and this is pr uh, pretty popular and because this is specially designed or tested for repair system. But there are some limitations of this uh, the, the other conventional uh, methods because some very strong assumption has to be made in order to use that. But I, I just think that maybe the, the analysis can give us, can give the data different voices. So it's, um, it's a good, good practice for me, for myself to implement all those on the website. And that's the visualization part and then the post analysis of the, of the proposed model. So these are just like some screenshot of the, uh, of the website. This is the visualization of the of the raw data, which is the terrain, uh, terrain slope. This is the uh, this is the turbine, and this is the slope from a certain certain direction. 
and that's the that's the turbine. And this is the result of the after after we give the flag to each turbine, we can see how the reliability performance of each turbine. This is this is it. So that's uh, you can select which turbine that you're interested. And then the way that I show the reliability result is through a uh, failure rate. But that's interchangeable to reliability to community uh, density uh, distribution function. And then this is just like a, a the to see that how. Uh, effective the repair is for a certain component. So you can select a uh, component and then you will just show the posterior distribution of the uh, stochastic node that we use that can help us to quantify the repair effectiveness. It's just like a closer to repairs new or minimal repair. And then this one is to help us to quantify the, um, the effect of envi uh, the environmental factors. And one uh, kind of obvious application that a company can, can use this uh, is to investigate or to, uh, to assess a site before they install a turbine because before they install a turbine they can collect all this information already like the, what's the wind profile, what's the geographical profile and then this can give them the predicted time to failure distribution of a certain site. So, uh, so this is my last slide. Uh, so if you can recall that I mentioned expert knowledge before, and that's one of the information that I want to use, but for the previous slides, I didn't actually use it because I used non-informative prior. Basically, that says I don't know anything before I collect data. But that's, that's pretty, sh that's, that's pretty uh, um, wet, that's a west. So, but that's also very controversial for Bayesian approach because people will ch uh, challenge you that how, how did you get this prior belief? Because that's one kind of information that come out of nowhere, basically. So this approach is that I try to combine, I try to combine the fatigue analysis result with the existing framework. And then the way to combine this is that I can do a fatigue analysis for different designs. And then through the stress-strain uh, stress relationship, I can get prior information on one of the stochastic nodes. And this needs a bit like a reparameterization because this is obvious different structure of the previous one. But you just try to decouple the, um, the scale parameter and the share parameter of the variable distribution. And then still updated by the, uh, by, the, uh, by the warranty data. And this is the ongoing uh, work. Okay, so the last one. And uh, yeah, the the quote, this quote, I uh, I saw it several times in a uh, in a in a symposium earlier this year. I, I think I, I saw it three times at least. But it, you have parallel sessions, so I think it, it must appear like more. <laughs> it says like uh, essentially all this one professor box. Uh, essentially all models are wrong, but some are useful. I totally agree with that. But just because I'm I'm, I'm a very uh, optimistic person, so I I, I try to. Um, I try to uh, interpret this as a, as, a, this, as a following way. I tend to think that all the models are correct. It's just the model that the world that the model is trying to describe may not be the same as the world that we are living. So, <laughs> so <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's important. The following is the important part. So, the, so that's, that's, that thing gets exciting because the interest will be lies, will, will lies in understanding the differences. And then we can try to solve the problem in both ways. Thank you very much. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.